morning everybody this is Daniel with Peace and Plenty Farms getting started on Monday morning it's already been a long one I was out there uh, first thing pulling uh, weeds in the strawberry patch and uh, I like you know how I've done videos before saying get the weeds before they go to seed well boy they were the rye grass and the crab grass was all starting to go to seed in there so ended up being quite a bigger job than I thought and quite hotter hotter than I thought the humidity and the heat is really really up there this morning I had to, uh, after that, run to the uh, hardware store and uh, get some feed and, and feed everybody. While I was there, I uh, checked the app on my phone to um, check my bank account and the funds and all that and make sure I was using the right card to, to buy the feed this morning. And I noticed the uh, virtual wallet, uh, federal virtual wallet has been installed on our checking account. And uh, this is very interesting. This is the uh, Federal Reserve's digital currency. Now this digital currency, we're in, a, this is, I'm filming in 2020, August 2020, and they're expecting to have this digital currency up and running by January the 1st. Now this digital currency will limit you on what you can purchase. You can't purchase this, you can purchase that. It's also going to give the Fed an opportunity, the ability to trace everything that you do, everything that you buy, everything that you sell. Uh, you, it, they will be able to control that with this type of currency. Also, this type of currency gives the Fed the ability to go negative interest rates. We're at the zero bound interest rate right now and they need to go uh, further with the interest rate negative because of UBI, Universal Basic Income. So we've already done one stimulus package and, and they're negotiating another one. They will not be able to take that away. What, what uh, welfare social program have they ever been able to stop? UBI, Universal Basic Income, is here to stay. And they need to go negative interest rates. And like I say, they are only gonna be able to do that with digital currency. So watch out for the new digital currency from the Federal Reserve. There's nothing federal about them and nothing reserve. Well, that's enough about uh, economics. Let's talk about what this heat and what we're working on out here. So I've got the, uh, the red Chevy right here. And you can see the little bleeder line that I've got hooked up to the um, bleeder valve on the caliper running out. And this little uh, tank right here uh, has a magnetic, uh, it just sticks right to the fender. And I prefer this type because I can lean out and, and pump the brake and keep an eye on the air rising up. Push the pedal down, hold it, and watch the air uh, bleed out and uh, then come out and, and tighten the uh, bleeder valve and, and move to the next one. So this one was, this system was completely dry, had a lot of air in it. I actually went around twice and did all four uh, brake lines uh, twice on this. And um, I'm gonna show you about the grill in just a second. Now on my uh, sweet wife's um, Ingrid's uh, Envoy right there, she, um, we, we were blessed with this vehicle. It was given to us uh, by a friend of ours and I was able to um, get the air conditioning and the front end all straightened out and she's been driving that. A deer hit her and it's kind of put some damage in it so she's really a trooper sticking with this, uh, this Envoy and it's starting to give her a little bit of trouble. First it was the uh, spark plugs and I changed all six plugs because they were down to just, just a point. The, the, um, little uh, tip had worn down so I changed all six plugs well it wasn't a couple hundred miles later and the coil, one of the coil packs went bad so I went in I was like give me six coil packs he says no we only got one so I leapfrogged along I leapfrogged along and found out uh, which one it was and changed it out well a couple hundred miles later another one goes out leapfrog along changing it out changing it out looking for the bad one and uh, put a new one in there. There again, another couple hundred miles. That time he had two available, so I changed out two. So that's four all together. And it started doing it to her again. So that left two, two to change, and I, I just now changed those two. So all the plugs, all the coil packs are, are new in uh, Sweet Ingrid's uh, Envoy. So I've got that ready for her to go. I've got the... Um, check the oil and the air tire pressure and antifreeze all of that kind of stuff so my baby can uh, get that and, and um, put it back on the road she's driving the explorer this morning and uh, hopefully she will be able to pick up the um, hopefully she'll be able to pick up the uh, ranger transmission a little bit later let me uh, turn this around i want to show you what i'm the chevrolet so 
on this uh, Chevrolet truck right here, the problem was the grill was completely smashed up and broken. So I took the old grill off and I found another grill that I happened to have off of another truck. I think this is a 95 or 96 uh, grill, but the lights are completely different. You can see the lights on that uh, 95 through 98, something like that. This is 88. I, and so the problem was switching the electrical over, but I happened to notice that the plug on the firewall was exactly the same on the um, 95, 96 model as this 88. So I just took this uh, wiring harness right here and I plugged it into this truck, the 88, and I, I did a temporary uh, ground right here, just a temporary clamp and a ground. And I've got the harness just laying here and I went ahead and tried the blinkers, the parking, the high beam, low beam, all of that. Everything works with this wiring harness. So I'm gonna feed this other wiring harness in uh, do a permanent mount on the grounds, get the grill in, get the lights mounted, get the turn signals all mounted, all the bulbs correct on this so the front end will be right. But for right now, I just want to get the tires on. It's so hot out here on this gravel. I'll get these tires on and um, get this thing up, maybe, maybe just get it where I can just pull it into the barn right here, get the fan on me, and I can work on this front grill. Now, I did end up... Um, taken out the seat in here because the uh, weather stripping was missing up here and the truck had been just sitting here as a really in the dump I just you know, I bought this for parts but now I'm putting it on the road um, I'll tell you that story in just a second so I pulled the um, this mat out and I'm gonna sand this it's still good and solid I'm gonna sand this down put a coat of paint on it and I'm gonna get try to find another rubber maybe go to the junkyard or pull one off of another truck that I have around here and put another weather stripping so I can get that water to divert it's also gonna need the uh, pins replaced in in the door right here when uh, when you close it it seems to have a little bit of a sag to it so I'm gonna get that sanded and get that painted when I was jacking this up I, I was out of, I'm completely out of my floor jacks, so I had to use the concrete blocks. And I wanted to tell you all to be really careful using concrete blocks. It's extremely dangerous. Put a piece of wood in between your concrete block and your, and your uh, axle because this point load from this bolt will create a point load in the uh, concrete block and it will actually shatter that concrete block and the truck can fall. Another thing I did is I ran the block front to back like this, and then over there, I ran the, the concrete block left to right to give it more stability. And, and you can see the wooden um, blocks that I put in there to keep the axle from creating a point load and shattering the uh, concrete blocks. These concrete blocks are not intended for uh, point loads uh, from the axle, but I'm just out of, I've got them all I've got so many trucks jacked up and tractors jacked up, all my good um, uh, axle jacks are taken. And I did stack up some tires here to uh, just for another safety thing. And I did have the, um, the rollaway jack under there also, but I needed it to clean out the um, lawnmower. So we did have that underneath there at the time when we were under there. So be real careful using uh, concrete blocks is what I'm saying. On this truck, it was kind of funny. I bought it for the uh, parts, and I started it up to move it, and I noticed the guy said that it had a knock in the engine and a leak in the transmission. So I, I was just buying it for parts. But when I started up and moved it, I noticed that the transmission leak was right here, right in this area underneath of the uh, truck, which is right where the transmission lines are. So I climbed underneath of there and I was able to cut the transmission line where it was leaking. It had rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed a hole. I was able to cut it and, and put a little uh, fuel line uh, with the correct clamps and all that on it to stop the automatic transmission from leaking. So then I started it up and yes, you could hear something knocking, but it really didn't sound like the engine to me. It sounded like it was coming from the exhaust or, or this area here. and so. With the engine running, I was sticking a big screwdriver all around down there trying to find out if it was something on the outside of the engine. It just didn't, it, it sounded exactly like a deep bearing knock in the, in the uh, crank, 
but it wasn't quite right. So I was looking everywhere and I happened to lean right against this hinge when I was working and come to find out it was this hinge knocking. It was knocking against, knocking against the uh, firewall right here. So I put a lot of grease in there and that stopped the uh, engine knock. So there you go. So this truck uh, went from a $200 parts truck to something uh, we can drive. Uh, Ingrid went to the uh, DMV and got tags and insurance for it. So all I gotta do is get these wheels on, get this grill put together, uh, put a coat of paint on the floorboard and put the seat back in it and we'll have something we can drive. Okay, let me get back to it. I'll let you know how we're doing after lunch. Thank you for watching and come grow with us. Shoo wee, it's a hot one today. I tell you, these uh, dog days of August, I'm just plain done with this heat. It's about lunchtime on the second day. You can see that I've got the uh, grill all uh, installed, got the lights all, I'm gonna call it zip tie because every support was broken on that and I had to put a bunch of zip ties on it to hold it on. But it's on there good and secure. High beam, low beam, the horn, left turn, right turn, parking light, all that's done. So the front of it's done. I gotta put a couple bulbs in the back. But uh, today I'm trying to get this uh, floor here done. Sorry. Let me turn it around. There we go. So I sanded it and uh, put down a coat of um, paint that I had right there. And I've got these hinges. Now this door is sagging, but um, these little these little brass pieces wear out. So all you do is uh, hammer this uh, pin right here. That pin right there comes out. It's got a little retainer clip up top. And then you hammer this pin down and you can replace uh, this lower bushing and this upper bushing. So I have a, a rebuild kit for this one and for that hinge. I'm gonna do both of those here in just a minute. And I've got the um, floor mat back here. I took and uh, scrubbed that up and put a coat of um, armor all on that. So we'll see how it goes. Good day, everybody. This is Daniel again. So this week I'm doing uh, updates right around midday, mainly because it's just so hot in the morning. I'm trying to make the most out of uh, the day. So today's Thursday. We started out the week, started out the videos uh, talking about the uh, Chevy truck. And so we're going to keep going on that because it's out there in the uh, driveway and it being so hot. I can only work on it just for a few hours. By 11, 12 o'clock, I'm done. So it's 11.30 now. We're going to do a quick video on what's going on. I've got the Ranger here behind me. They just called. The transmission is rebuilt on that one. Now, it's probably, most people would say you're wasting your money on the Ranger having the transmission rebuilt. But keep in mind that that has uh, 70,000 original miles on it. I just put... Um, new air conditioning, new brakes, new gas tank, new fuel lines, a lot of the electrical I've replaced. I've gone completely through that truck. It's got tags, insurance on it, no rust, and I've got a spare vehicle I use for parts. So yes, $1,300 for a, a rebuilt transmission is, is probably not the way to go on a Ranger, but for me and what I have in it and the gas mileage and the way I drive it to Maryland regularly, um, it's a good clean no rush truck and I've got plenty of spare parts so I went ahead and spent the $1,300 so today's Thursday and they are they say it's ready I'll probably have Ingrid pick it up tomorrow after work she's now covering the uh, Friday uh, workload at the shop so now I have to work I only have to work just one day now so that's the Ranger and uh, let me turn the camera around I want to show you the um, the process progress on the uh, Chevy now like I said I'm working on that just in the morning and then in the afternoon I tackle uh, smaller jobs uh, yesterday I got out all of the uh, chainsaws and I went through them gassed them up sharpened them and all of that I had bought a new uh, carburetor for the um, Husqvarna there and it's not working very well it runs full throttle now so I'll probably use it for limbs and things like that. And uh, this one right here, the uh, 017, it's really old, but uh, it, it has uh, funny characteristics 
to it now. The 036, there's nothing that can beat that saw. It's got the uh, Oregon blade on it and the Oregon uh, bar. And that, that thing just rips. I mean, it just rips. The 041, I didn't uh, tune it up. I uh, just keep it up and put away in case I need a, another big saw one day. So that's what I did yesterday um, after working on the um, Chevy. And then today after lunch, I'm gonna get these two uh, Cub Cadets out, clean up everything and just pull them inside here and change the blades on those so I can uh, mow next week. Next week is gonna be mow and weed eat and uh, put down weed killer around this entire place. So I'll have to uh, take a break from uh, the automotive uh, stuff. Maybe Ingrid will help me. She always likes to run that zero turn around. Let me show you what we've gotten done uh, on, on this so far. So yesterday I showed you the front grill was all in. I've got the front, this door fixed. It doesn't sag anymore. You gotta kinda slam it. You gotta kinda slam it to get it to, to close. But uh, that is because of this weather stripping. I just, I just put all this weather stripping in there and it, it, I think it just needs to um, just needs to press down a little bit. So I took the parts out of that uh, gray uh, Chevy that I had. Um, I have another running rail, right, plastic rail right here. I may change it out because this one here was, was broken, but for right now, we'll just use this one. Uh, these are the hinges. I got them all replaced, put a little bit of grease in there, the pins and the bushings. I even replaced this piece. I didn't notice till I had it all back together, the spring is missing out of that door right there. I don't know if I can put that in afterwards or not. We'll see. We'll have to go out to the parts truck and see if I can get that. Got the speaker cover put on. Floor mat. Got the seat in. This is an amazing condition seat. I think I bought this off of like Marketplace or something. I don't know. It's in pretty good shape. It won't be bad. Started getting the uh, trim in. So we've got this gray uh, trim across the back. I'm going to put the light and get the light installed back up there have the gray trim around the side here and uh, so the other door is still needs to have the weather stripping and the gray trim put on that that'll be the first thing tomorrow morning is to finish up that side seat belt trim all of that because I, I caulked all of this in right here when I put it on caulked it and I even put uh, self tapping screws on the inside to hold it so Oh well, we'll get used to that rubber. Okay, this will wrap up the week. Normally I do uh, one video per day, but I stretch this one video out all week because uh, it's just so hot. But I did get this Chevrolet uh, done. I need to uh, run over to the parts store and get a battery uh, tie down kit and some wiper blades and it'll be ready for inspection. But uh, I got the seat in, and I got the uh, trim. I still gotta tighten up that light. And uh, got the trim in here. I'm gonna have to put another screw up here. Little tiny things to have to do. So all that trim. And uh, of course we got the floor done, seat done. These are all parts from um, the other Chevrolet truck that I have. No radio or anything yet, but it does uh, start and run the doors do close so I scrubbed it up I uh, oiled up greased up the uh, tailgate so now it works fine got the tags on got the lights I had to polish those I just took some of that um, Maguire polishing and polish those and fix the bulbs in there washed off the mildew and uh, I guess I'm just going to run down to the uh, auto parts store and pick up the uh, battery tie down. It's a little rubber piece that holds the battery down and some wiper blades. And uh, we're done. Appreciate everybody watching. I did get the blades uh, installed on the two uh, Cub Cadets yesterday. So they're ready to uh, to mow the grass. I just, uh, I just can't today. It's too hot. It's like 4 or 5 o'clock right now and I just finished the uh, Chevy truck. A lot of drilling and tapping and broken screws, rusted on screws, wiring harness problems, but I did finally get high beam, low beam, right, left turn, brakes, reverse, all of that working. So it's the end of the week and I did get it finished and it was a tough one. 
I want to thank everybody for watching and keep in mind that it's about the harvest. Have a good rest of the weekend.